why, with all their money, are the LeBron Jameses and the Jay Zs and everybody else partaking in this? Do they not have a choice? Are they compromising somewhere that they have to go along with this? Are they sadistic? Is it is it self hatred? Mm-hmm. What is it all of the above? Because what I what I don't understand is why are the people we celebrate the most among ourselves, the black people we celebrate the most, seemingly the most weaponized against us? Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, greatest African psychiatrist in modern history from this city, said, if you don't understand white supremacy, what it is and how it operates, nothing else will make sense to you in this society. The reason why those who are least interested in helping us fix our problem are the most celebrated is because they are the ones that are put out in front of our children to be celebrated. If you were not loyal to black people before you got rich, you definitely will not be loyal to black people after you get rich. But let's go further. During slavery, when a rebellious slave misbehaved, what would they do? They would put him out in front of all the slaves and they would whip him and tar and feather him and lynch him as a message to the others. Every generation, white America, makes a sacrifice of a black celebrity. Look at your entire life. I've been on the planet 45 years. Every generation of my life, every decade, white America finds a celebrity that they put out and destroy them as a reminder to LeBron and Oprah and Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry and everyone else. Jay-Z, Beyonce. Don't forget, you might be a billionaire, but remember who helped you make that money. At the end of the day, y'all got the money, but we got the power. That's why they don't mind signing a $100 million contract. Because everybody in your circle is white. Your agent is white. Your lawyer is white. Your publicist is white. Your banker is white. (laughs) The person selling you the car is white. Mm -hmm. So do you know what a black celebrity really is? He's a water sprinkler. He's a redistributor of white wealth. Because you can't use that money to help your own people. The reason they don't help us is because the white man has made it clear. Number one, white people will not support black people who are loyal to black folks. You cannot become a popular celebrity in America if you are unapologetic. It's impossible. You must do what? Compromise yourself in the presence of white folk. You must be an acceptable Negro. If you are not an acceptable Negro, they will destroy you. I like LeBron James. And I see he got some black manhood in him, but he's trying to navigate this in his final years because he's concerned about what his public memory and image will be after he retires. Oprah's doing the same thing. You see, they want to help, but they know white folks don't value black people who know they black and want to help black people. That's a crime in America, being loyal to black. You can't be rich and be loyal to black folks because you end up like Johnny Cochran, assassinated, so-called brain aneurysm. They murdered Johnny Cochran because he was investigating how much money America owes black people for slavery. First, he gets OJ off. Then he gets Geronimo Pratt of the Black Panther Party off for free, defended him for free. And then he says, I'm going to go into reparations and find out what America owes black folks. Black folks said, we can't let this Negro come out with no price. White folks said, we can't. They killed him. That's what they do. Look what they did to Bill Cosby. This is the number one black television star. Yeah. He is the father of black comedy. There were those before him. But in terms of opening the door to mainstream, Cosby was everything. He's sitting in a prison in Philadelphia right now. At 80 something years old. Legally blind. It takes two guards for him to eat, two guards for him to go to the bathroom, two guards for him to get dressed. To Goss to help him in. This man is the number one black public personality in modern history. And look what they did to him. And they used white women to do it. What was his crime? His crime. Technically, what he was charged with. No, I know what he was charged with. But what was his crime to make him be a target for destruction? He wanted to buy a major network. Last time he tried to do it, they killed his son on the side of the road. Bill Cosby re-upped because he's a billionaire. He said, I'm going to get one of these networks before I die. And they said, no, you're not. So they found those white women to come. First of all, you're the number one black TV star in America, 1970s. You sexually harass a white woman. She benefits from white privilege. You suffer from white racism. What white woman do you know if you sexually harassed her in this building today is going to wait 40 years to tell on you? She's going to tell on you right now and destroy you right now. Bill Cosby didn't do nothing wrong. 
Everybody knows in Hollywood they use sex and drugs. Yeah, he gave them pills. You know why? Because they wanted the pills. Because that's I've, what they I've do. I said that myself. He I'm sexually really harassed sorry. you, but yet you kept on calling him? You kept on seeing him? You went to his house when his wife wasn't there? To his hotel rooms and all that? Yeah, the I, Bill I, I know. Cosby Crucible is a good message to black men who love white girls. They can sex you. They can marry you. They can have your babies. They can take care of you. But when they get that phone call from that white male and say, it's now time for you to do a job for your people, they will gladly do it. See, one of the problems we have as black people, we fail to realize that racism is not personal. Racism is business. See, black people will have a white friend and say, well, those are my white friends. OK, they may be. But you need to understand something. Those may be your friends, but they have a loyalty and an obligation to being white before they are the friend of a black person. And if they have to do something to you in order to look out for the best interests of white power and white control, they will do it. They will gladly sacrifice your friendship to help white people achieve their agenda, as those white women did to Bill Cosby. Now, go, Robert Moton, mm -hmm. just to, to rehash, yes, to wrap up. Robert Moton was allegedly part of the Boule mm -hmm. Secret he Society. Was. You Which know. was founded in Philadelphia. Yes. In, in, and in allegedly there's a quote circulating saying that W.E.B. Du Bois, who I believe was a founding member of uh, what was the Phi Sigma Pi, mm -hmm. the Boule, he said, quote, and I still have to find the reference, but this is what's circulating, that W.E.B. Du Bois said, quote, the Boule was started to keep the educated black man away from the Honorable Marcus Garvey. Well, and you know, and in, in my last episode, I discussed the boule to some degree because it's important. It's important that people understand the black bourgeoisie, the, the black bourgeoisie and their role is oh, to yes. really keep oh the gatekeeper. The, they're the gatekeepers. Gatekeeper. Yes. And, and they've been traditionally recruited Woo. through the HBCUs yes. and so on and so forth. And Howard University, which we love, mm -hmm. is the number one recruiting site. For black agents of the FBI. That's a documented fact. You, you know, and, and I, me personally, I believe this is why Roland Martin came out against Wendy Williams when she said there was no more need for the for the And HBCU. he's also boule. He said it himself mm -hmm. on The Breakfast Club that mm -hmm. he's boule. Yeah. I've had many interactions with him. Oh, yeah. He's a proud boule. Oh, yeah. Proud. And that's why he tried to come against me on the show I did with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but to me... He can't be a high-ranking boule, or he no, wouldn't no, even no, be no. advertising. He wouldn't be advertising. He's a step and fetch yeah, boule. Yeah. But 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 again, no neck boy here. <laughs> but but it shifted from those type of educated black people to the celebrities now. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I I think they're obsolete in this day and era. You make me. a good point. You know, you because, make a good point. Because there's not enough black, there's not enough black professionals to hold the attention of blacks in the ghetto and in the underclass. So now the black boule has become the black celebrity class. That's it. So that you know what that means, and though. They don't need that education. Means time, They're even yes. dumber. They're even dumber. Yes. Not, not to indict but do you anybody know what that in means? particular. Yeah. That means we're going to have to take on the rappers. Of course, we're going to have to take on the football players. I'm we're already take doing on, it. Yes. <laughs> but, but see, our youth don't have the political maturity to see <laughs> yeah. that the same person whose music you're listening to, you're famous your favorite basketball player is now the gatekeeper for white power he's the one that's going to co-sign and silently defend police genocide mm -hmm.